Hi guys, my name's Amy from Chat Cakes Decor. Today I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to make a standard anemone. This is the easy way. So some things you're going to need. Um, first off, I'm going to bring this in front of me. This is a little $4 rack that you get from Kmart. Okay. You can use your oven rack as well if you need to or anything else that works the same way. Um, I've got a little, a little plate of corn flour over here. I've got some pliers, some needle nose pliers, these are actually cutters, um, two forming cups, so one is bigger than the other, a veining tool, it's got a pointy end and a flatter end, and a dog bone tool. I've got a 20 gauge piece of wire, I've got a small sponge pad for shaping our petals, obviously your gum paste. I've got a cutter set here, which I also sell on my eBay page. It's four teardrops. So these two are going to be used for the smaller one and these two are gonna be used for the larger anemone and a veining, um, a silicon veining tool here. And of course you're going to need some stamens. You'll also need a little bit of black gum paste if you want to use a black center or you can use a white or whichever color you like. But today I'm gonna to be making a black center with my stamens. I don't actually have the black gum paste here, but you'll see that later in the tutorial. You'll also need a rolling pin. I don't use mine off to the right. I have got a KitchenAid with a pasta machine attachment and it just makes my job a whole lot easier. And I actually don't know how to use a rolling pin anymore because I rely on this beast too much. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so take some of your gum paste. We're going to start with the large one first. The large one is easier to do and the small one is a lot harder. So if we start with the easy one, you should be a little bit more confident to do the littlest one. So activate your gum paste and you're going to roll it out to about one and a half to two mils thick. If you've got a pasta machine, it's on level two. Okay, so starting with the largest cutter today, we're going to cut six shapes. I've got a little bit of extra different colored gum paste. Make sure they're nice and clean cuts and they've got no frilly, dodgy bits on the end. Is that six? Yep, six, okay. And put your gum paste back into its little airtight bag or container. So using our fingers, if you've made my peony, you'll already understand how to do this. But for those of you that don't, load up your forefinger and your thumb with some um, corn flour. And we're going to pinch the edges. But because this is an anemone, we want to get three, two or three little bumps at the top and then you're going to widen the petal more than lengthen it. So let's start with a little pinch, just a little pinch and you'll get, you'll get a little tip bit like that. And now we're going to just thin the edges but we're gonna work in a widening motion. So it should look like that. I'll try and bring it up for you. Okay, you'll notice that it's not perfectly teardrop anymore. It's all in different shapes. We want that, especially for the anemone because the anemone has got frilly bits on the edge and I'll show you how it makes a big difference later. Keep going and take your time as much as you can without your um, gum paste going too stiff. See, I've actually ripped a tiny bit off. I'm actually going to pluck that whole lot off and just bring it down. So that'll actually add a little bit of flavour to your petal. <clears throat> now you're going to need to get your, pad, um, your foam pad or sponge pad, I like to call them, and your dog ball too ready. We're going to take one of your, one of your petals, place it down and give it a little press to get some veins going. 
and it should come out looking like this. Peel it off from the base, chuck it on your foam pad, but because we're doing the largest one, we're going to start with the largest side. This is the small end, this is the large end. And what we're going to do is we're just going to ruffle the top and the edges. We just want to sort of give it a little bit of a ruffle. I like to move back and forth with a little bit of pressure because if you put too much pressure in, you get a, um, a def defining line in it and it looks, it just doesn't look natural. That's what it will look like. Okay. Put it to the side and continue on with the next lot. Okay, so now you want to take your largest cup former adjusting my camera <clears throat> and what I didn't actually um, tell you that you needed before was you need some edible gum glue or a little bit of water with a paintbrush will do fine I actually forgot because I was putting a bit of Tylos powder or CMC powder into my water to make it into edible gum paste but you will need some so taking your little cup put a tiny little bit of corn flour just around the center piece because these have got a hole in it and you do need it it's important take one of your petals and place the tip over the hole and just touch a tiny bit of gum glue to the edge and then you're going to take the next petal and you're going to place the tip over the wet end of your little tip of your first petal so it overlaps this is going to take a little bit of practice because you've got six petals so you need to branch them out evenly but keep going around a little bit more pace keep going around until you get to the last one and place your last one in and give it a little bit of a push down in the center and your petals will start to come out a little bit okay so that is step number one step number two you're going to need your second largest teardrop cutter and we're going to roll the gum paste to the same thickness as we did before this time you're going to need to cut five petals so there's one, two, three, four, five. And repeat what you did with step number one to shape and thin out your petal edges. I'm going to fast forward through this bit. Okay. Now you're going to vein them the same way you did the last time. Remember, you're not trying to lengthen in your petals. You want to widen them. If you lengthen them too much, it's going to come out looking more like a hibiscus than anything. It'll, look, it'll just look dodgy and sick. Take the big end of your bone tool and frill your edges again. You just want them to be frilled, more so at the top. But just play around with them until you get the shape that you like. Don't be afraid to experiment. <clears throat> I do make an advanced version of this as well. Um, which hopefully one day I'll put on a YouTube tutorial for you guys but it does take a little bit extra time and people tend to prefer to buy these ones when they're making a cake than the other one because the other one is advanced so it is more expensive but they do look sensational they're more fragile as well so they don't post very well last petal nearly done okay Okay, 
Okay, this is the fun part. Take your first lot of petals. Use your paintbrush to put some glue into the center. And now your first petal is going to go in between two of the original petals. And then you're going to continue that the whole way around. But because you've only got five petals, it'll sort of come together a little bit easier than previously. Okay, so that's what that, oh, that's what it will look like. If your petals aren't sitting properly, grab a little bit of, um, what do they call it, paper towel or a little bit of cotton bud. I prefer paper towel because the cotton bud sometimes sticks in there and you can't get it out. And just sort of roll little bits in and put them underneath your petals until you get the desired look that you're after. Now we're going to move on to your centerpiece. Okay, so this is a small anemone. I've done exactly the same thing but with the small the second smallest cutter but this time we're going to use the small end of our dog ball tool so I'm just going to show you really really quickly I've got a little bit of silicon hanging off that vein your petal small end of the dog ball tool and just frill the edges doesn't matter if you frill the whole lot, you can do sections if you want. I usually like to do the ed the left and the right side and then a little bit in the middle. That's just my preference. As your gum paste starts to dry out, it gets harder and you find you've got to give it a bit more of a press. Take the small cup former, dust it a little bit with some corn flour and you're going to do the exact same step you did for the large one. We're going to place all of our petals around that centre hole. Remember you've got six petals, so three on one half, the other three on the other half. And give it a press down so that your petals move out a little bit. Now you're going to use the smallest cutter. This is going to get harder again, but persevere with it. So I have cut five petals with the smallest teardrop cutter. And I'm going to branch them off or thin the petals out, but I'm widening them more than anything. I'm not tipping the edges. Sometimes I get lazy and I just sort of pinch the edge. I don't really worry about trying to shape it too much because these petals are tiny okay. place it towards the end of your petal veiner because these are smaller petals they need the finer veins and then frill the edge of your petal in various places with the small end of your dog ball to, uh, dog bone tool, dog ball tool. Get confused between which ball tool I'm using. And continue this for all of them.
Okay, take your little cup again, place a little bit of edible glue to the center and you're going to continue placing these tiny little petals overlapping the center or the join where the other two petals meet, just like you did for the large one. You've only got five of them. Okay, give it a little push out. Now using your veining tool, lift some of your petal edges up just to shape them the way you like. And now you're ready for the centerpiece. Put that aside. Okay, the centerpiece for the small anemone. Take a tiny little piece of gum paste, whatever colour you like. I'm using black just because that's what I'm using. It's going to be the size of a pea. Place it down the bottom or on your mat and give it a tiny little press, not too much. Put a small dab of edible glue to the center. Again, not too much because if it gets too wet, your stamens won't stick. Now these stamens I've already cut. They're about from, from very, very end to the tip, they're about a centimeter. But from below the bud to the tip, they're about six to seven millimeters. Whereas, so they're shorter than the previous one. So this is a previous one. I'll zoom in on this for you so you can clearly see. Whoop. If I don't first destroy myself. Hopefully you can see that. Excellent. Okay. So start placing your tips around like we did with the previous anemones. Okay, take a piece of gum paste which is a slightly little bit bigger than what you used previously. You don't want this one to be the same size as the big one. And you're going to place it on the top like we did previously and give it a tiny little push, not too much, just to keep the stamens firm. Take your 20 piece gauge wire, cut it about 10 to 15 centimeters, whichever you prefer. And we're going to put that little right-handed hook back in. So grab your tweez um, your needle node pliers at the end of your wire and give it a twirl so that you get a circle. Grab the end of your circle and bend it to a 90 degree angle. Okay, take your flower cup, dab a tiny bit of edible glue to it and stab the center and pull it through. Put your center piece over the top of the wire and give it a little push and then get stabby with your veining tool. Stab, 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 stab. Okay, let that dry for about 24 hours. You can put a calyx on the end of it if you want to, um, but generally no one really cares because they don't see the back end of it. All right, guys, thank you very, very much for watching my tutorial. I hope you've learned some beautiful flower making today. Have a good one.